Hi, my name is Stephanie Perrin. I'm a behavior analyst at Brett Denovian Associates, and I'd like to talk about the Good Behavior Game. In 1969, Barish, Saunders, and Wolf introduced the Good Behavior Game. It's an interdependent group contingency game, and it has several components involved. Some of the components include dividing the class into teams, keeping in mind the behavioral needs of each of the students and also the strengths of the students, operationally defining the rules and setting those clear expectations. Anytime a rule is broken, the teacher will provide a hatch mark and then provide verbal feedback to the class or team what was broken. The other thing is going to be to establish criterion. So for this, the criterion determines the number of points that the team may not exceed if they want to win. And then the winning team is provided with positive consequences or rewards. Some of these include extra recess time, a homework pass, or lining up first to go to recess or lunch. Some of the research variations have been to address uh, decreasing problem behavior, non-compliance, out-of-seat behavior, and then also to increase some of the adaptive or appropriate behavior such as sharing. Some concerns expressed by the teachers is that the good behavior game may evoke some negative peer pressure comments from other students. One study that examined negative comments expressed by peers during the Good Behavior Game was Groves and Austin in 2018. This study showed that when the Good Behavior Game was implemented, the researchers did not observe an increase in the frequency of negative comments. Several studies have also demonstrated the long-term positive effects of the Good Behavior Game. In 2008, Kellum and colleagues demonstrated that students exposed to the Good Behavior Game package at a young age, in first or second grade, observed a delay in the onset of cigarette use. There was a significant impact on alcohol and drug abuse and dependency, as well as a decrease in aggressive behavior. In addition, other studies have proved that those students who participated in the Good Behavior Game at an early age were more likely to graduate high school and there was a reduced need for special education services. Given that the Good Behavior Game is a multi-component intervention, several studies have been conducted to determine which of those components are necessary. However, each of these studies that were conducted were done so only after the participants were exposed to the entire Good Behavior Game package. Foley, Dozier, and Lesser in 2018 conducted a study that controlled for these sequence effects. In addition, they evaluated if the Good Behavior Game was an effective package to decrease disruptive behavior in preschool students during structured instructional times, and they also collected data on both group and individual levels of disruptive behavior. Results indicated that the Good Behavior Game was effective at decreasing disruptive behavior in the preschool students during those structured instructional times. Regarding the component analysis of the Foley study, while some reductions of the disruptive behavior were observed, within some of the individual components, the study did say that the package of the Good Behavior Game was most effective at decreasing levels of disruptive behavior below 80% of baseline. What I found most interesting were the implications of the component analysis after the Good Behavior Game was introduced in its entirety. These data suggest that you need to implement the Good Behavior Game to establish certain patterns of behavior. And then, once those patterns of, of behavior are established, they can be maintained with less intensive or less robust interventions. Here are some of the references that were used to talk about the Good Behavior Game. I look forward to hearing your comments.